So thank you for inviting me the, to share our thoughts in Arab about uh, the digital bit environment. Um, as I said, my name is Volker Buscher. I am the global director for our digital business and a member of a new task force that our group board has set up that basically is addressing digitization across all we do. And, and that was the brief we gave us because anything more narrow we felt was missing uh, part of the challenges we were facing as a firm globally. Um, we are about uh, 12,000 people, we think, uh, globally in, a, in around 70 countries around the world. And we do everything from um, structural engineering and civil engineering for bridges, which I'll show you later, to uh, behavioral psychology and change management in how airports transform themselves as, a, as an asset in, in complex operations. We've done quite a lot of research uh, in this space of digital built environment. In 2010, we issued our first Smart Cities report. And since then, we, dozen, we published about a dozen <coughs> reports for government industry and our own, as we are completely independent and self-funded. We have no debt. We don't borrow money. We don't have links to any product company. So we sometimes also invest in our own research to, to take genuinely independent views. And a few findings out of that were quite interesting about our industry. Um, we did a report around utilities broadly for UK government and identified a 40 billion digital export market in waterways, transport, and energy. Um, the cost of congestion in London and other cities is around 730 million, and there clearly is a link how more transparent and open data could make a contribution to that. And we tried this year something around utility data and reducing dig disruptions in London, and we failed with that, but we'll try again this year. Um, one of our property clients um, is a corporate real estate organization that provides real estate for 100,000 people where every single member of staff moves around every six months. So you have 100,000 people moving office every six months, and the data management they use to organize all these moves and changes is an advanced version of Excel, um, which we don't think is necessarily the future. The tech sector, the tech se nothing against Excel, by the way. The tech sector, by the way, was the only sector in London during the recession that didn't reduce headcount, and every city and government we work for right now is trying to develop a digital economy in their own city or country to be part of that uh, uh, job and economic growth and inward investment discussion. We're trying quite hard right now to convince the two mayoral candidates in London to write a digital manifesto, which would be in line with what some of the Scandinavian and North American cities have done recently to also address the political and the humane issues that cities face around digitization. Because we think this is not just about startups and beanbags and slides, which are often associated with it. We think this is transformational in our industry. We looked at what we mean by digital. Is it just IP? Is it just Ethernet? Is it just open data? And, and unfortunately, what we found is a picture like that, uh, that which basically means it is everywhere. Uh, the entire technology stack in the built environment is going through a change. You know, a camera with edge uh, analytics capabilities can now count people and publish that data in JSON or via an API to anybody who wants to know how many people are in that frame. Uh, a large real estate portfolio usually has around 15,000 cameras on it uh, who are currently only used for or primarily used for security. And this happens to every single asset that is currently going into the built environment. And um, so it's social, mobile, cloud, IoT, analytics, I call it the new digital skin is everywhere. It will connect the cloud, it will reach your mobile, it require novel data science approaches to create value. And I think Tim Berners-Lee, who I probably quote wrong here, with him in the room is at risk, um, last year um, made it quite succinct and said, you don't exist if you're not on the internet. And I think right now that's what the built environment is doing. It's starting to think about being on the internet. And Gavin was right too. Um, in the talk he gave recently, I think it was at Bloomberg's, I'm not sure, um, where we talked about data infrastructure. And, and I agree with that too. Data, or perhaps digital, is an infrastructure, and you could almost compare to rail. Rail is not just tracks and trains and stations. It is the backbone of, uh, uh, it's a backbone of many countries and, and around which they want to develop their economy. Uh, this morning, that's why I'm very formally dressed. I was actually hoping this year I would come in my ODI t-shirt. I then was invited to a breakfast with the deputy mayor of London and 
my chairman explained to me that the T-shirt wasn't a dress code. Um, <laughs> So, so um, we, we discussed there the role of digital, and again, it was seen as an economic infrastructure. Uh, it was seen as part of participatory democracies, it was part of job creation, and it was part of efficiency gains, material efficiency gains across all industries in the city. So what are we doing about this? What do we see as an opportunity for us and others in that? This is, um, uh, this should be, That was Kevin, sorry. Um, this is um, the, the, I always thought the fourth crossing was actually the fourth crossing. It shows you my ignorance as a German who lived here for 20 years. The fourth is actually the river, apparently. And the crossings, there are only three, which makes this a rather complicated story. But, <laughs> but each of those will have about a thousand sensors on the bridge. We are now looking at, at using ideally an open, open API from a Met office on weather data, we're working with Vodafone, it's our, currently our preferred um, mobile data vendor for, for um, transport analytics to have occupancy data. We clearly have camera data around occupancy on the bridge. And, and we're looking right now on how we can create a platform that will allow us to create insight about the performance of these big expensive assets uh, uh, to, to get more value out of them. So let's say we extend the one that was built in 1880 on the right and we extend the life by another 50 years. That is worth tens if not hundreds of millions of pounds. Now, the next bridge I quite like because um, it was recently before it was finished up there uh, uh, on, a, on a leadership training course. I'm not sure what they tried to teach us uh, other than, than that we are insane um, to go up there because on a, it was on a little steel lift that goes up on the outside. Uh, and these are, by the way, the cranes they use to offload the, the mega container ships. This is Stonecutters in Hong Kong, one of the biggest uh, bridges in the world. So there's nothing really stopping us to, to, to take that data, to take that one, take Golden Gate Bridge, the one into Wales, and maybe another 10, and to create a platform that will allow us to create insight around all the biggest bridges in the world, which I think would be an unbelievably valuable asset to have in the built environment uh, itself. And when we then look back to our original research that I mentioned, and we looked at asset monitoring uh, in the built environment, we then identified actually the same platform could do wind farms, uh, offshore rigs, uh, uh, oil platforms. There's a whole raft of infrastructures that we could do. We then compared it with our UKTI research, and we found, oh gosh, look, transport, utility, cities, property, sports major events, and other complex assets are all trying to do that. And, and that got us quite excited. So all the sectors we work in are starting to develop digital narratives or digital agendas in their own right. And collectively, that will mean the built environment soon, we believe, will be as big in, in digital terms as currently finance, consumer, uh, retail, marketing are. Um, our clients supporting that. This is... Um, oh, a bit slow. This is a list of the clients we currently work with around their digital agendas. And, and they are also all changing. They're changing from what we called a bottom-up approach, where they did project by project, to a digital agenda that would combine strategy with activist-led change. They are not trying to, to cut out the entrepreneur and the innovator who's sitting in the department, self-teaching themselves on Python or all sorts of other interesting stuff. It is actually now combining the power of organizations with the individual activism um, that these companies have. Uh, they look at the use of open, shared, and closed data. They want to explore what data science has to offer. And they want to re-engineer the fabric of the built environment to include this new digital skin so that, in theory, uh, everything could be measured if that is of value or helpful. Um, in Arab right now, we are, we are setting out a number of activities. Um, we're launching something um, that we call Insight which brings together our data strategy, analytics, visualization, city modeling, 3D modeling, and development of online tools. We're looking at the data infrastructure discussion the way Gavin and ODI defined it, both as an open asset where we can with others, or as a platform that we would want to develop with our eco, uh, ecosystem partners to, to also create two-sided platform business models on this. Um, we, we obviously do that to help our clients generate insight that is true and actionable, but we're also doing that to prepare our own firm. So we believe our 11, 12,000 engineers, behavioral psychologists, 
will all have to learn to a degree what digital means or what skills they need to have to fit into a digital future. We are very keen to develop our ecosystem of partners further. So the Open Data Institute is already one of our most strategic partners in there. We're keen on the Alan Turing Institute and talking to them right now. I think that's a great initiative. Uh, Mastodon C, Open Census RO are two of the startups. Uh, iSoft Stone in China, we just signed an MOU with. And there will be more that we'll add to our ecosystem framework. We, we want to work with open innovation. I'm up, I'll come back to it actually in late, uh, later why. We, we would like to launch, for example, and raise the funding to create a city 3D model that will be open sourced. We already have a lot of data from five or six uh, major UK cities, which we like to flip open into an open innovation environment, which we think would create quite an interesting platform for developers and companies in each cities to develop their own solutions uh, in that environment. We, we are discussing and we are hoping to launch a campaign around climate action data. Um, we are in Paris this month or next month for COP, um, where we present another climate action report, but the data is locked up in reports right now. And we are campaigning right now internally and with some of our partners to create an open innovation environment for climate action data. My personal view is that what we do as Arab is around 11,000 projects at any point in time. And, and that on our own, we would struggle to scale fast enough and stay on top of the next disruption. I think Usman will speak to all of you about what he's doing right now, and he's one of these troublemakers who's, who's just going to come in left field with a big idea that if it's true, will mean our 11,000 projects have to again respond to a new technology trend. We need to develop a porous organization that can create value with our partners, and we need to shape a better world. Thank you. Thank you.